Conditions now factor horrible. Will you please meet with us? And we said we would, but you can't meet in the developing world. You can't walk up to a factory with your notebook and workers come out, you interview them. I mean, there's goons, there's spies, the military police. So you do everything in a clandestine manner. We're about to start the meeting, and in walk three guys. Very tough looking guys. The company had found out about our meeting and sent these spies. Obviously, uh, we didn't have the meeting, but these young girls were really bright. And as they were leaving, away from the eyesight of the spies, they started to put their hands underneath the table. And I put my palm under there, put my hand under there, and they put into my, my hand their pay stubs. So we'd know who they were, what they were paid, and the labels that they made in the factory, so we'd know who they worked for. And I took my hand out after everyone had left, and in the palm of my hand was the face of Kathy Lee Gifford. But the bottom of it is the, the interesting part. A portion of the proceeds from the sale of this garment will be donated to various children's charities. It's very touching. Get your right here. Walmart is telling you if you purchase these pants and Kathy Lee is telling you, you purchase these pants, you're going to help children. The problem was the people who handed us the label were 13 years of age. Do many people have family work? Yes, mother. Just me. You support. How many people do you support? Eight people. Eight people. Yeah. And how do you do with that salary? Is it enough? Let's look at it from a, a different point of view. Let's look at it from the point of view of the the uh, people in Bangladesh who are starving to death, the people in China who are starving to death, and the only thing that they have to offer to anybody that is worth anything is their low-cost labor. And in effect, what they are saying to the world is they have this big flag that says, come over and hire us. We will work for 10 cents an hour because 10 cents an hour will buy us the rice that we need not to starve. And come and rescue us from our circumstance. And so when Nike comes in, they are regarded by everybody in the community as an enormous godsend. Hey, the hey, 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 to hey. be here. The door was wide no, open. No, 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 no. That's my clothes. Hey, Those are my clothes. No, this is not your clothes. Where's your camera? Let's look. Don't touch the woman. Okay, why? Okay. This is a private company. Yes. Without permission, how can you come here? Uh huh. Huh. Well, the door was wide open, and uh, the only do I open your throat door. Employees, not for you. We went through the garbage dump in the Dominican Republic. We always do this kind of stuff. We dig around. One day, we found a big pile of Nike's internal pricing documents. Nike assigns a time frame to each operation. They don't talk about minutes. They break the time frame into ten thousandths of a second. You get to the bottom of all 22 operations to give the workers 6.6 .6 minutes to make the shirt. It's 70 cents an hour in the Dominican Republic. That 6.6 .6 minutes equals eight cents. These are Nike's documents. That means the wages come to three tenths of one percent of the retail price. This is the reality. It's the science of exploitation. What happens in the areas where these corporations go in and are successful? They soon find that they can't do any more in that country because the wages are too high now. And what's that another way of saying? Well, the people are no longer desperate. So, okay, we've used up all the desperate people there. They're all plump and healthy and wealthy. Let's move on to the next desperate lot and employ them and raise their level up. Well, the whole idea of the export processing zone is that it will be the first step towards this wonderful new development. Through the investment that's attracted to these countries, there will be a trickle-down effect into the communities. But because so many countries are now in the game of creating these free trade enclaves, they have to keep providing more and more incentives for companies to come to their little denationalized pocket. Um, and that the, the tax holidays get longer. So the workers rarely make enough money to buy three meals a day, let alone feed their local economy.
something happened in 1940 which marked the beginning of a new era, the era of the ability to synthesize and create on an unlimited scale new chemicals that had never existed before in the world. And using the magic of research, oil companies compete with each other in taking the petroleum molecule apart and rearranging it into, well, you name it. So suddenly it became possible to produce any new chemicals, synthetic chemicals, the likes of which had never existed before in the world, for any purpose and at virtually no cost. Fabrics, toothbrushes, tires, insecticides, cosmetics, weed killers, a whole galaxy of things to make a better life on Earth. For instance, if you wanted to go to a chemist and say, look, I want to have a chemical, say a pesticide, which will persist throughout the food chain, and I don't want it to have to renew it uh, very, very often. I'd like it to be relatively non-destructible. And then he'd put two benzene molecules on the blackboard and add a chlorine here and a chlorine that, and th that was DDT. When the 8th Army needed Jap civilians to help them out in our occupation, they called on native doctors to administer DDT under the supervision of our men to stem a potential typhus epidemic. Dusting like this goes a long way in checking disease, and the lads are them. Pardon our dust. As the petrochemical era grew and grew, warning signs emerged that some of these chemicals could pose hazards. The data initially were trivial, anecdotal, but gradually a body of data started accumulating to the extent that we now know that the synthetic chemicals which have permeated our workplace our consumer products, our air, our water, produce cancer and also birth defects and some other toxic effects. Furthermore, industry has known about this, at least most industries have known about this, and have attempted to trivialize these risks. If I take a gun and shoot you, that's criminal. If I expose you to some chemicals which knowingly are going to kill you, what difference is there? The difference is that it takes longer to kill you. We are now in the midst of a major cancer epidemic and I have no doubt and I have documented the basis for this that industry is largely responsible for this overwhelming epidemic of cancer in which one in every two men get cancer in their lifetimes and one in every three women get cancer in their lifetimes. Towards the end of 1989, a great box of documents arrived at my office without any indication where they came from. And I opened them and um, found in it a complete set of Monsanto files, particularly a set of files dealing with toxicological testing of cows who have been given RBGH. BST, trade name Posilac, is being used in more than a quarter of the dairy herds in the United States, according to Monsanto. 